Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is strings, and I know we've done strings before. We did them when we did variables and we looked at types, but strings are a little more complex than floating points or ints or boolean values. And there's actually a ton of stuff you can do with strings. There's a whole bunch of functions and methods that go along with strings that you don't really find with the numbers. So we're gonna look first in this video and just kind of review a little bit and then we'll go into some new stuff. But in the next few videos, we're gonna get into doing some examples and other things with strings. So in this video first, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a couple strings. I'll call this my test string. And I'm gonna put another one here. We'll just call this test string two. I okay. And maybe I'll call this one just for okay. Now what we're gonna do with these, some things we've already done before. So if I want to know the length of string one, I can use the len function. This works the same on tuples and the same on lists and the same on strings. And if I run this, it'll get 15. And the same thing for two also get 15 because they're the same length. Now, in many ways, a string is just like a list. So if I'm accessing elements or I'm using a function like length and other things, a lot of the same functions will work on a string that will work on a list. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, on this string as well, we can use the escape codes. So if you remember our escape codes were things like this. So the two most important ones, tab and new line, these are some things that you probably will use as a beginner programmer. There's a whole bunch of other escape codes and I doubt you're gonna wanna use them. And there's even escape code stuff for printing Unicode characters and later on in the advanced section I'll discuss what is a Unicode character and how you print them out and how you change formattings and if you've looked at some of my first videos uh, when we set up the environment we actually did set up our environment so that we could uh, run code using like Chinese or other characters and you probably saw that and you're like well that's cool but uh, we didn't really discuss what it means for like UTF-8 and Unicode but later on I will do that Okay, so getting back to this and the escape codes, uh, string one, string two, if I print these, you're gonna see that this one does a tab and prints and then another, there's another tab here. And tabs aren't always gonna be even. It's not like, uh, they're not, it's not like a tab that is four spaces is gonna go at the end here and then go four spaces. It's actually, the tab is based on, you know, one tab, two tabs, three tabs, four tabs. So it kind of, it's based on its point in the string or the index in the string. Uh, this one here gives you two new lines, so new line, new line. And you notice it does account for these spaces that are in front of them right here and here. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Uh, we can also access elements of a string based on, I'm gonna access part two, based on the, the same way that we did lists. So I use the square brackets again and then I can access the element at a specific index. And it's still zero up to whatever the length happens to be. So in this case, if I access zero, I get a T, one, E, two, there, a lowercase t. And now check it out, if I do four, I get a new line. So I'm accessing this here, T, E, S, T, and then I get this new line. So this is not index four, this whole thing is index four. It's just like this whole tab would be index four as well. All right, so keep that in mind that when you're pulling out characters in a string, that any escaped character is just that character. All right, so if, if you want to escape uh, this character or if you're escaping a quote for something, maybe I want to escape this quote because I want to put a quote here around string. So I want to put quote, string in quotes. If I were to print this, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I run this, I'm going to get the quote, not the slash. All right? So 
keep that in mind. Uh, we can also do for loops. So I can say like uh, for character in string to print character. And if I run this, you're going to see that it loops over duh, 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 just the same way that it would loop over inside of a, a list. Okay, so you can use range here as well. So you could say uh, for i in range and we go back to the length we just saw, string two. And then I would have to do str2 and i. So this should all be familiar to you by now. You've done a bunch of stuff on loops. You've used this probably 100, 200 times by now, and you've been using arrays. So you should understand this part here. And uh, if I do this, it does the same thing at the bottom that the other for statement did. All right. So these two test strings, they, they work kind of like a list that we're accessing things, we're printing things out, we can use the index on them, lots of things like that that are just like list. Uh, some other things that are like list is we can actually also use the in or not in operator. All right, so the in and not in operator, if you remember, if we had a list, so if I say list one is equal to four, five, six, I could say print uh, four in list one, and it says true. And if I did this, print, um, let's say test in uh, string one, it's true because the word test is in string one. And even if I did uh, test slash t, it'll still be true, or any element. But if I did a five here, it'll say false, because there's no, this whole thing cannot be found anywhere inside here. And if I change this to not in, I'll get true again, because this is not in string one. So not in string one, okay? So some pretty cool things you can do with strings, uh, that, and most of them, are identical to what you can do with a list. So I would say in thinking about strings, when you need to do what is called string manipulation, so string manipulation, manipulation means to change something in a certain way, to manipulate it means to kind of play with it and, and change it. When using string manipulation, if you can do it with a list, you might be able to do it with a string. So just test it out to see if it works. So certain things will work and certain things won't. But a lot of the things as far as accessing elements will work on a string. And what we're gonna do in the next video is we're actually gonna look at a whole bunch of methods and we're going to see how a string works kind of like a list as an object and that you can change different things on the string or search the string or anything by using these different objects. So I'm going to delete all of this part right here, but what I'm going to do is keep our two test strings just like that. Okay. And so in the next video, when we come back, we'll use these two test strings and we're going to cut them apart and we're going to make them uppercase and lowercase and split them and, and do a whole bunch of different stuff. Okay. So uh, look forward to the next video, and if you have questions, comment section or on the website. Okay. So comment section, YouTube, comment section, website, I'll eventually find what you post. Okay, so thanks for watching and see you soon.